Today's topic, top six money errors doctors make. Replace doctors with everybody and you have a much stronger YouTube video, but we are going to stick with doctors because you are our people. We're gonna walk through six big hitters. Who doesn't love a good errors video? But we got everything from mismanaging money to bad investments to divorce to inappropriate insurance. Stay tuned, it's all coming up next. Mismanaging money, probably the number one physician mistake that continues to haunt physicians as an entire group based on their long-term financial outlook. First up is just not paying down debt appropriately. I usually look right to student loans on this one. You wanna make sure that you have a good payment plan in place because you probably have a lot of student loans. Now, if you're going for public service loan forgiveness, just make sure you're making the proper payments and on the proper track going forward. Lending money to family. We get it. You just got that fancy white coat. Everyone says, hey, I could use a handout here. Be careful. Be careful here. Don't get any trouble. Plus the worst people that you can loan money to are family because, well, it's family. So be careful here. And then probably the number one mistake inside of this group here is just continuing to overspend. Overspend can mean a lot of things. It could be from a budget perspective. It could be from a car perspective. It could be from a home perspective. The idea of keeping up with the Joneses is not cool. Be the middle-class millionaire. Be the millionaire that no one knows is a millionaire because they drive the basic car, they have a nice home, but not an extravagant home, and they live within their means from a budget perspective. So the number one money mistake we see quite often, or I should say money error we see quite often from our physicians is not managing their money Appropriately. Skipping savings or really not saving enough. And the reason why this is a bigger error for physicians in particular is just because you get a later start. Physicians have a much longer training path that does not allow them to quote unquote make the big bucks till a little bit later. And that's likely when we finally can get called up on our savings. So it's not as much skipping, it's not understanding that you're getting a late start, which is why we commonly always set a bar of at least 15%. Really, we will use 20% quite a bit as well. So understanding that you're getting a later start, so you gotta play catch up a little bit here, but also a lot of physicians don't wanna work until they're 70. There is a not only a high burnout in the career, there's also a higher burnout later in the career where you just can't keep up at that pace, right? You can't be running through the hospital as a 70 year old. So we're trying to keep an eye on that as well. So between the late start and then not wanting to work until you're 70, increasing that savings ratio is gonna be really important for our physicians. Failing to plan for taxes. Not that you're gonna forget that you have to pay taxes, but more or less forgetting the tax planning part of it. What are you doing to help your overall tax bill? Are you maxing out your 401k? Are you maxing out your 403b? Do they offer a 457b plan? Do FSAs make sense for you? Do HSAs make sense for you? Do you have 1099 income? Can we fire up a solo 401k? If you do have 1099 income, are you preparing to pay your quarterly taxes? So it's not the fear of not paying taxes, it's just not planning enough to lower your tax bill by following all the rules. So in this one in particular, make sure that you're working with it, not only a good financial advisor, but also a very good accountant as well, so that you have a good tax plan in place, not only for this year, but proactive forward-looking tax planning as well. Divorce, easily one of the biggest errors we can make in terms of financial planning and really from a life perspective. You want to do everything you can do to avoid divorce. So spending time on your relationship, spending time on date nights, these are all vital for your long-term success, not only as a couple, but also for your long-term financial plan. Divorce doesn't always have to be personal either. This could also come from the business side of it, which is why we always say whenever you're setting up a new business entity, you are having a contract review all the fine print. So it's not always just a personal divorce, it could also be a business divorce that could really throw a wrinkle into your long-term plan. Most physicians are terrified of medical malpractice on losing a lot of their assets. I always make the joke, you are going to probably lose half your assets a lot easier from divorce. Whether that is a personal divorce or a business divorce, make sure that you are investing time into both of those relationships because it is going to be vital to long-term success of your marriage, your business marriage, and your financial plan. 
inadequate insurance coverage. Nobody cares about insurance until they need the insurance. So this is why you really need to be proactive with insurance planning. Disability insurance comes up high on our list, ensuring your income. Not only do we hope you have true ONOC coverage, but do you have the proper coverage in place? Are you making sure that you're supplementing that between what you have on your group plan? If you have a group plan, do you have the proper life insurance in place? Life insurance is not going to benefit you at all, but it's going to certainly be vital for anyone that relies on your income. Uh, one of our other favorite insurance coverages is called umbrella insurance. Umbrella sits on top of your car, your auto, and your home for extra liability. Unfortunately, as a physician, you get an extra target on your back. From there, you can even look into proper property and casualty, right? Do you have proper auto coverage? Do you have proper homeowner's insurance? And then we can't skip out on malpractice insurance. Malpractice insurance is usually going to be set up already from the hospital, or if you own your own practice, you know, you went through these limits here, but don't skip the fine print there. Make sure you have proper malpractice in place. These are all very important topics because if anything goes wrong in any of these, and even plug in health insurance, right, on a personal perspective, these are all going to be extremely vital because again, one thing goes wrong here, it can be devastating, not only to you, your family, but also to your long-term financial plan. So make sure that you have proper insurance coverages in place. I know it's not exciting to pay those premiums, but if you ever need those policies, you're gonna be very happy that you were paying those premiums. Investing without research. No, I'm not referring to timing the market and building the perfect portfolio. I'm actually more or less referring to the fees you pay. Understand what fees you are paying. If you went down the street to the local advisor shop because they had a commercial and you just signed up with them because they seem like they're good people, just understand what you pay. Before you know it, you could be paying an advisory fee, then you're paying for high cost mutual funds, and then you're paying for a platform fee. And all of a sudden you do the math, you're paying 3% every year in fees for a one year check-in where they look at some fancy papers and then you don't talk to them again for another year. Maybe you do have all that in place, but you love this person and that's okay. We just need you to understand what you're paying and what you're getting out of it. And if you compare those two and you're happy with that, that's fine. I'm not here to bash anyone's fee models because everything has a conflict in it. No matter how you look at it, there's always going to be some form of conflict. My key for this one is just when you start to invest and you start to work with a professional, or if you're doing this on your own, make sure you always understand your fees, whether it's from an advisor fee, whether it's from an investment fee, whether it's from a platform fee, understand all the moving parts in terms of fees. And there you have it. The top six money errors doctors make covered a little bit of everything inside of there from investing to insurance to divorce. The key is you are trying to avoid as many of these for as long as you can. That will give you a lot better success in your long-term financial plan. So thank you for tuning in with me. If you have not subscribed to the channel, now would be a great time to do that. And if you click on this little bell icon, you also get a notification every time we release a new video. Thanks again for tuning in and I will catch you on the next video.